Welcome everybody. Today's Sunday, January 21st. And this is Coming to Maverick Part 3, General Orientation. Coming to Maverick 3 General Orientation, I made it a little sub change. I decided that the agility test, drug testing procedure, and the DOT physical part would probably have a section of their own. So I'll be working on that. So I'll go by that with what we do here. I will cover that in an upcoming video. The Maverick campus is a like a gated community. When you, when you come there, you need to have your ID badge to get in. There's a building at the front, and that's where our extended services people work. So there's somebody there 24-7. The Maverick community is comprised of several buildings. You drive in, there are areas where it's pretty clear where only trucks can go and areas where only cars can go. Uh, there are several buildings. There's the main administrative building. That is all where all the offices are. And also, it's where most of the employees go in on the side is where the driver's room is. So make sure that you check that out if you go there. You need your ID to get in, but once you get there, you're gonna have an ID. So, and you need to wear your ID all the time. You can get in and in there, that's the driver's room. They have showers, they have wash machines, they have TV room, uh, the transflow machine and uh, vending machines, things like that. And of course, if you wanted to go see anybody within the main offices, that's your entrance to go in there. They also have our whole training building, which is a standalone facility. It has seven classrooms, I believe, a large general meeting area where we have all the meals. Then we have some offices. It has two floors. And then we have all of our securement bays. And we have room for you know, probably five, six trailers to be in there at one time. I don't know exactly, I can't remember. But there's a lot. That's where you'll do all your securement training. The general classrooms are all equipped with computers and projection screens and a little area in the back where the staff can sit and work on grading things. Uh, Maverick is very uh, technology savvy, so to speak. I recently learned that instead of having the desktop units where we would do all of our tests and get, watch all our little videos with headphones and things like that, now we they have a uh, tablets that they're passing out. I haven't seen those, but that's what um, a driver told me. I know that it's always changing. On campus there, we have our student dormitory, and this is two floors with rooms, and it has a TV room, vending machines, uh, showers, laundry. Laundry's free anywhere here. Of course, your room with its own shower and, uh, and facility. If you need to refrigerate something, there's a refrigerator in, over in the training building that is a large refrigerator that you can stick something in if you need to. Say you have a medicine that needs to be refrigerated, that would be important for that. Also, there's a weight room over near the driver's uh, lounge area. And if you ask around, you'll find that. Out back, there's a mile long walking trail. So if you wanna walk a little ways, you can. This is very nice. Maverick starts a new group every Sunday. So most students are traveling on Saturday. When you get to the either the Greyhound station or you get to the airport or wherever you need to be picked up, they have a number you can call and a van will come pick you up. Now that van, if you realize it, will probably be driven by a Maverick driver. Probably a trainee. Oftentimes they utilize the students that are back for their final final phase of orientation. After they've been in the trainer truck, they come back for a few days and so they're the ones that are probably going to be picking you up and they're good people to talk to and get answers from you'll go to the bus station you go to the airport it's likely that you'll be riding in the van with a lot of people and you got to remember something those people are all just like you they are all coming to maverick they don't know anybody so you may as well make friends you will get a packet of information when you arrive in that packet you'll have your id it'll have a 
a big O for orientation on it, and that lets you get into the buildings. You'll have your room information, where you're staying, you'll have a kind of a schedule, and the first day you get there, you'll probably have some homework in that packet. Probably some, either a trip plan or, or something they want you to figure out. It'll keep you busy. On Sunday morning is when it, everything starts, and you assemble over in the training building, uh, you'll kind of see people starting to get over there. Don't be late. You'll have breakfast over there. You'll go in and you'll sit there. There'll be introductions. Uh, the instructors will all introduce themselves. Everybody will introduce themselves. Uh, then you'll have breakfast and then you'll go into the classroom. Depending on, on the size of your group, you may go into two classrooms. They've been known to do that. When I was there, there was only one. There were like 24 of us. So then you have a sign seating. You go in there, you see your name at a, at a place. You go, you sit down. Get out your notebook, turn your phone off, put it away, you're on the way. All of Sunday, Monday's different. Monday afternoon, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday morning are spent in what we I call the phase one orientation. And you're gonna be signing a lot of forms, watching a lot of small videos, getting a lot of information, making sure all the paperwork is taken care of. You'll have people come over from human resources. You'll have safety people come in and introduce themselves, talk about things. You'll have information about the insurance packages. Everything will be covered during that those first few days. So it's really important that you, you pay attention, take notes, and, and really kind of get an idea of what's going on. Now, intermixed with all that, you're introduced to hours of service, you know, trip planning, learning the Maverick way, how Maverick wants you to, to do your job out there. So those are very good days. Food, I told you you had breakfast. Every day when you're there as a student, you will have breakfast and lunch. And they are really good, really good food. Dinner is on your own. Eat a really big lunch, you can make it through. Generally speaking, what happens is you go back after class, people assemble and they're working on homework. They're touching base with their families. They're doing various things, but there's gonna be somebody that's gonna say, let's take a van and go to get some food. If you see a van, they've got two or three vans there, big ones, and you guys can drive those. You gotta sign them out, you get the keys, and then you can drive and you can go to Walmart, places like that. You can go and get food. Now the vans aren't meant to go someplace and stay there for extended periods. But if you have a whole van full of people, you can go to a place. I know over by the Walmart, there's like three or four restaurants right there that you can take your choose choice of and people go here and there and then they meet back at there. On Monday morning, there is no breakfast. So make sure that when you're traveling, or on Sunday, make sure that you have something to eat Monday morning. I can't really go until noon without having something to eat. So you might want to take that in consideration. One thing, there's coffee 24 seven available and you can get it in the training building, in the student dorm, there's a coffee pot and over there in the driver's lounge, there's a coffee pot. So always coffee available. When you do arrive, one of the first things they do is they give you a cash card, like a little credit card that you can then use to go and eat on for the rest of the week until you get paid. And this is really nice. So you have some money. You are paid during your whole time at Maverick. When I was there, it was $550 a week, but I think it's gone up. Maybe it's like 600 now, I'm not sure. But I know that you know things change and this video might be up for a while and so things could change like that. You will get paid every week. You won't get your first paycheck until you're there for a few days. So what you need to do is make sure that uh, you have a little bit of spending cash to get through the first week for your dinners. You shouldn't have any other money needs except for your dinners. That snack on or that breakfast on Monday morning. And on Monday morning you want to eat light because you're going to be doing the uh, physical and the agility tests and all that. So you, you wanna you don't want to go, you know, have stuff yourself. Starting on Sunday, you'll also be introduced to Maverick's tests. And when I was there, I heard that they've really cut back on the number of tests people take. But when I was there, it seemed like we took a lot of tests. Some were five questions, some were ten questions, some were like longer. You take a, a long test on the FMCSA manual, the FMCSR, which is the regulations, the little green book, which they'll hand out to you. But of course, every test is open book and open note. 
So any notes you take, you can look at. So there's no excuse to get anything wrong unless you misread the question or you didn't take any notes and you can't remember. That is really nice. So it's, it shouldn't be too difficult. One thing I want to note is that I started with a class of 24 pretty much all along the way, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning. We'd come back from a break. They give you plenty of breaks and there wouldn't be somebody there. They left and they could have left for a lot of reasons. I know a couple of them because I talked to them at the time. They said, I'm, this isn't for me. I'm leaving. Maverick will pay your transportation back home if that's what you choose. So you're not stranded there. You're not held a prisoner. Some people were asked to leave. There were some people that could never quite figure out trip planning and could not read a map. That's important, you have to be able to do that. They were asked to leave. There were some people that just could not pass the tests. You know, they give you a lot of chances. They give you every chance in the world. They want you to succeed. You will lose people. By the time that we got through our securement training and we're ready to go out with our trainer, there were from 24 down to about 14 of us. That's to be expected. Even though Maverick does a, a really good job of screening people and having you, you know, do a lot before you get there, it, still, no matter what, that happens. On Monday morning, I told you, you don't have breakfast and you have your agility, your physical, and your drug testing, all that going on. I'm gonna cover that later, as I said in the beginning. So let's skip over that and we'll go to Monday afternoon. And Monday afternoon just picks right up where Sunday left off and you are in the classroom the entire day. You get a lot of good breaks, you get breakfast and lunch, you can take care of your personal needs after class, there's plenty of time, you can run to Walmart, you can run to do anything you want, but uh, you will have homework every single day. So you wanna get uh, efficient at it. I did a trip planning example a few videos ago. It might be a good idea if you're planning on going to Maverick to practice some trip plans. One thing I didn't tell you in that video is that when you're there, you have to tie your logbook into it. You will be logging every day from the day you got. So you're gonna be using a paper log in the beginning because it's important that you know how to use a paper log in case the, the electronic log fails. I've had to use paper logs, you know, three or four times because I had a problem with my Omnitrax. So you learn that, you learn how to recap your hours. It's really good because you learn all of that stuff and they really teach you well. It's good, it's good stuff to know. You feel good about it after that. One of the major points when you're in these early days is value-added driving, which is a program that Maverick has kind of bought into that is, is about safe driving. And it has some really good points. It, when I watched it, I thought, oh yeah, you know, this makes sense, Bob. But as I started driving more, and the more I drove, the more I realized that it is perfectly right. So when you do see the value-added driving information, pay attention to it, because it really makes a lot of sense. I've got to say, it's the best driver training that I've received outside of back in 1980, when I was 25 years old, and I went to Greyhound. Greyhound was quite a different company then. I spent three weeks up in Detroit and it was nothing but safety, it was amazing. But Maverick is a close second to that. So we've made our way through that week. You're getting all of that stuff. On Thursday, you are formally offered a job with Maverick. You put your signature down, they come around, they shake your hand. You've seen the little videos on social media where it shows these students coming out of a room and shaking hands with a bunch of people. That is that Thursday morning. At that time also, you'll likely move from the dormitory on campus over to the exit of the highway right there, where I-40 is, and there's a motel over there, the Galloway Inn, that Maverick, I think that the hotel would probably have a hard time staying afloat if Maverick wasn't there. You'll be rooming off campus over there for the rest of your training. Now, I think some groups, depending on the size of the incoming group, they won't move you over there if they have room on campus so it all comes down to that so that Thursday they'll pass out your personal protection equipment everybody get a helmet you'll get safety glasses or if you're wearing glasses they'll give you side shields which may or may not fit on a lot of glasses for me then it became a choice what am I gonna do that's why I got prescription safety glasses but I didn't get them right away you know don't go out and spend a lot of money unless you really feel like you're gonna need that right away I, I would probably put that off for a little bit because it's kind of expensive to get the ball rolling well but they're gonna give you a vest and gloves they give you arm sleeves that in case you don't have a long sleeve shirt you could put on and I, I never wore those kind of hot 
It's real tight. You're going to, after lunch, start security training. You'll get a whole new group of instructors. And I really like the group that I had when I was there were outstanding. Uh, they were real. I, they were really good. They were all drivers, and they they know their stuff. It, it was pretty impressive. I really, really enjoyed my securement training. It was split up between classroom, and then down the practical down in in the bays where you're right on actual Maverick trailers sitting there. You don't have real product because a coil is kind of heavy, and we use those great big things they put cable on and make pretend they're coils, and they they kind of boarded them in and everything. And then we use, for bar, we use uh, big lengths of PVC pipe. But you get the idea. And we just secure everything that you can imagine we carry. You get practice securing. Everything from shingles, slinkies, bar, palletized freight. We get it all. Plate, everything. And that covers a long time. So you start that on Thursday afternoon. And that goes Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There are no days off. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. On Wednesday is your last day. So that is... Thursday through Tuesday is intensive securement training. If you're feeling a little insecure about, wow, how am I gonna learn all that securement? You know, cause you've seen in my videos, I'm doing this, that, and the other, and, and hauling a lot of things, and there are a lot of decisions that have to be made. Well, you get really good practice for that. They're really big on safety. When you climb around a load on a trailer, they are watching you like a hawk. You'll break into two or three groups. One of the instructors will show you how it's done and they will secure the product and you watch. Then what you do is you break into twos or threes. Mark and I, we joined up most of the time. One of you does it and then the other one does it. And you do every single thing by yourself. And you got the other guy there that's helping you remember, say, no, no, this needs to be like that, or do this. And really, really good. You know, I, I mentioned Mark, he, in my group of 24, I said that we were down to 16. I don't know how many, I never saw any of those guys when I came back from being in the trainer truck, because they were all kind of staggered. And I think I was, the way I hit it, I was the first possible person to come back because I went exactly 21 days in my trainer truck. And when the trainers, we were available for the trainer, my trainer came through the Maverick yard that afternoon and I was on his truck. So I came back earlier, but anyway, what I was saying <laughs> is Mark and I are now the only two people left in my group that are still with Maverick. I may cut that out. It's not, well, no, don't get me wrong. And what it is, is people have found other opportunities or they decided that, you know, trucking was not for them or they got fired or they got a local job or, you know, had things happen in their life that precluded and made changes. And that's understandable. But right now, Mark and I are out there. And funny thing is, we haven't bumped into each other out on the road once. I see other guys all the time. Your securement training will finally end when you have your securement test. And that is on Wednesday. The test is really kind of cool. You take a lot of little tests, oh, you know, on the computer. But this is a practical test and you go down to the base and they take all the trailers and they set them up with every kind of load that we've learned. They leave little things are wrong. And then you go around with your notes, it's open note, take notes. And you go around and you try to identify the problems and you write them down. It's kind of tense. Nobody can talk. They watch you really close and everything. It's kind of exciting. I don't know. It, it was kind of neat, but everybody got through it, I think. Well, I don't know if everybody got through it. I think some people had to do it twice. Let's just say that. But everybody, everybody gets through it. If you don't get through it, they have you stay another week. You're part of Maverick now. They're going to make sure you learn it. You stay that extra week. Now, one thing I failed to mention is what if you are coming to Maverick and you are interested in doing glass? Everything I've set up to this point would include you. Glass students must take full securement training. And that's because they carry steel now and then, other products now and then, on a backhaul, or maybe they're off someplace and instead of having them deadhead, they'll they'll have them carry something. Lots of times it's hard because their trailers are really specific to glass, but they do. You'll start glass trucks. They have a full set of chains and they carry a full set of straps. So they're ready to go. If you're interested in glass, you're gonna do all this and it's really, really good stuff. Really good knowledge. Now, if you are TCD, that's our temperature control division. You come in, you don't want anything to do with flatbed. You don't want to do all that. Well, you don't do securement training. Back when you are offered the job on Thursday. So you'll be there for that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday morning, 
and you're offered the job, then you will split off and you will do TCD training specific to TCD, a lot of classroom. And I think you are likely done in just a couple days then. But I'm not, I'm not absolutely sure on that, but I don't, I know that you're not around as long as we had to do securement training. So you're gonna do your TCD stuff and then you're gonna go out with the trainer. Flatbed and glass go through the whole range. The test for securement is on Wednesday, pretty much takes all day. Then you spend the remainder, and I, I wish they spent more time with it personally. It would have really helped me. Or maybe they realized that nothing they teach you is really gonna sink in until you're out there on your own, but it's tarping. You go out and you learn how to fold tarps. You learn how to tarp a coil. You learn how to tarp a gypsum load or plywood load. You learn how to uh, put a tarp on bar and, and everything else that you've seen us doing out here. You know, when the time comes and you're out there, <laughs> it's a pretty bag. The, how, one of the most difficult things for me when I was, once I got on my own was the tarping. Not in the difficulty of the, it physically, but just learning how to get it right. It took a little time, so don't worry about it. Yeah. When you're out with your trainer, you will learn a lot about tarping. You should. But even then, you know, it just doesn't stick. I remember really well, I got my truck and I got my first load and I had a coil. <laughs> and I was running out of Jeffersonville, Indiana. I was running out west. I think I, I was just going to St. Louis. I don't know where I was. I was going to someplace in Missouri. I'm driving along on I-64 there and I look at my mirrors and I, I see that tarp flying off the back. You know how I roll my tarps underneath the excess? I keep the excess in the back and I roll it up underneath there. That's the way they teach us. A lot of people do it 180 degrees, so they roll that axis up the front, which I've done that too. In fact, I, early on, I did that all the time after this experience because I looked back in the mirror and my tarp was like Superman's cape out there. Needless to say, you figure it out, but it takes time. After you do that test, uh, your securement test on Wednesday, you learn tarping for the rest of the day. Personally, I could have seen a couple days with tarping. It's, it's sunk in kind of slow with me. Thursday morning, you're then back meeting with the training staff that has more to do with, they're the people you're gonna be communicating with when you're out with your trainer. And these are the people, what they're doing is arranging transportation. Find out who your trainer is and you get a name and likely, on Wednesday or sometime, you'll get a call from the trainer and they'll say, hey, how's it going? I'm gonna be picking you up. Uh, we're gonna be meeting up. You know, here, I'm right here right now. But you'll be meeting with the trainer staff, so to speak. Now, these are the people that are arranging everything between you and the trainer and are your go-between, which is very nice. Some people at that point, their trainer was maybe across the country and, and they said, well, what do you wanna do? And they said, well, I'll go home for the weekend. A lot of the people in my class, they went on home for a few days at that point. I didn't because my trainer was coming through Little Rock and he was there Thursday at one in the afternoon or noon. He was there. I mean, I didn't even eat lunch. It was like, go. So it was really cool. But at the same time, I mean, I was glad to be out of there. I didn't have much time to, to mess around. As soon as they said, hey, he's coming through. Are you ready to go? I said, I'm packed. My trainer lived in Muskogee, Oklahoma. Great experience. It was a hard experience, but it was a great experience. He lived in, in Muskogee, like I say. I lived here in Indiana. I didn't get home during the entire time I was in training. So I didn't get home from the time I left in orientation until I ended up going up to Gary, Indiana, where our old terminal was, picked up my truck, and then I drove it home. Other people got home. Other people were going to either meet their trainer out on the road somewhere or they were going to travel to their home. The trainer was coming through close by. They pick your trainer based on the distance he lives from you. My trainer lived a long way from me, but that was just the luck of the draw. This is your my introduction to your first couple weeks there at Maverick. I know that I didn't get it all. I know there are things that I left out. I looked back through things that I had written down at the time, notes I'd made, and tried to remember. I'm fairly certain I got a lot of the days right, but things change. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But the thing to remember is that you will succeed if you try. You go there, you smile, you put your best foot forward, you get ready for some stressful days, 
and you make it work. You will succeed if you, if you want to. Maverick wants you to succeed. I truly believe that Maverick has the best training facility and the best training program in the industry. My next video, I'm gonna to have to do a three part A and I'm just gonna cover the agility test, the uh, DOT physical and the drug testing, all that goes on that Monday morning. So look for that. I'm gonna gather my notes and see what I can do to get this right. Till then, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I enjoy this. This is awesome to be able to look back and if it helps you, that's what I'm really after.